saving a template. So say this is your template and you're proud of it. It's great. If you don't see any changes you want to make right now, first thing you want to do is delete all the audio because every time you open a session as this template, if there was audio there, that audio would show up every single session. So um, you want no audio in your template. You can do things even like if you like the transport window uh, to automatically like be here, be open, like the size of your tracks to be smaller. I'm holding shift option and making a change and it's just changing the ones I have selected. See, it's actually not changing the master fader because it's not selected. Um, but if I option, if I option clicked it, it's, click, it's changing everything. Uh, I, I've done that, I do that accidentally a lot. <laughs> and then I'm like, damn it, all my sizes are messed up. I like to make my click track smaller. I like to make the master fader smaller because I don't really need to touch it, you know? Um, I usually make my auxiliary smaller, but then I maybe like my vocal a little bit bigger because I need to see more when I'm editing. So things like that. I even like to uh, have the insertion point all the way at the beginning. And the button to do that is return. You just hit enter. Anytime you hit um, enter without other things being open, like to hit like okay on a prompt, enter will always just go back to the beginning. Here's another thing uh, I love to do. I already pre preset have my background vocals turned down. Uh, I wanna make sure that that uh, lead vocal is on zero. I already have my panning set up the way I like. This is beautiful. All right. So how to save this as a template? File, save as template. And you want it to be saved in the system, right? So um, never click this, uh, select a location for a template. You want it to be installed in the system. Um, and there's categories. You can, it, I mean, <laughs> I always just leave it on songwriter. I only have one template. You can make a guitar template if you want. You can make, you know, different templates for different categories, but uh, for my purposes, I just use one. Then you name it, track types, Chimera, uh, just named it after my session. You can name this, um, you know, Julie's first template or template, sometimes I name it like by the year, like this is my 2022 template. If you uh, end up wanting to make changes, right? Uh, so I already have a template, right? Um, if this was my template and I wanted to change, if I like, was like, oh, you know what? I want group one automatically be highlighted every time I open my session. I'll go in, go to save template as, and under name, I'll select this, and this will overwrite um, my previous template. So that's how you would make changes. Um, definitely not doing that, because this is not my template. <laughs> so I'm just going to, uh, change it to like Kim's sample template. Yay. You can call me Kim if you want. Okay. I'm going to hit okay. And we're good to go. We just saved a template for fun. Let's go, uh, open a new session with this template. Okay. Create new, create from template. It was under songwriter. Check it out, Kim's sample template is here. Selecting that, aha, for a 24 bit, yay. Everything looks good. Create new session, let's call this. I'm gonna just put it in my um, other folder. I'm gonna say Kim's sample template, open. Boom, there's my template already set up for me beautifully. You guys, this is gonna be a game changer. Huge, huge, huge. Um, everyone should have a template. I hear people don't, and that means they're setting up all that routing every single time, and it's just, it's just a waste of time to me. Um, I'm all about efficiency really fast when I record, and I can get more done that way. So I encourage you to do the same. If you're en route to try to make some money with music as your profession, um, being fast is really a great asset, so I'm gonna always encourage that. There it is, how to make your first template. That's your homework, make it happen. And next, I'm gonna give you a tour of my own personal template so you get to see how I have it personally set up. This template has evolved over years and years, so it looks very 
complicated, it's very dialed in. Can't wait to show you. Here is my crazy, intense looking template. <laughs> I'm gonna give you my tour and show you how I have everything set up and routed. First of all, how I have some navigation things already set up. I always keep my stuff in grid mode um, and I always keep my smart tool highlighted instead of one thing. I like these. Uh, one thing I noticed is uh, the escape button is a quick key to change settings. Um, and I happen to accidentally press it quite often. <laughs> so um, I will suddenly not realize that I've changed it to like the grabber and I'm like, wait, where are all of my tools? <laughs> so just be aware uh, that's uh, what that button does and it happens to be one of the things that I accidentally do sometimes. So might happen to you. <laughs> um, making sure that I have my grid mode, I have it as a bar and bars and beats. Um, and then I like to keep playback loop on as opposed to get wait control click regular I like loop playback and I pretty much just keep my uh, recording in uh, regular record as opposed as opposed to like loop or punch or anything like that um, I always have my yellow AZ on so that the nudge function works on my laptop keyboard uh, I have my minutes and seconds, Marco's tempos, all that. I have a track named Beat, which is um, an instrumental track, stereo track. Uh, often um, I do client work on Sound Better and uh, they'll send me the instrumental and then they'll also send me a guide track. So I have two tracks that basically are there for me to import the audio for uh, gigs. So I have the instrumental and then I'll have them singing it. And then I have those both in solo safe and I just uh, mute the guide as I don't need it. Like I'll listen and then I, once I got the part, I'll mute it. I have a plugin called S Stereo Imager on these and it's grayed out. This kind of grayed out uh, is different from this kind of darkened one as well. Um, so real quick. Obviously, this gray looking one is on. You know it's on because it's the bypass button is not on. If this orange bypass is on, it turns that plugin off. Just like these. See? Bypass. Um, I would like my EQ to stay on though. I EQ'd my click because I didn't like the sound and I cut some of the high sound off of my click. <laughs> so, in order to disable, uh, you can click the bypass or you can actually hold command and then click on it. If you hold command and control and click on it, it does this grayed out thing and that's like, so this is super off. It's not going to be using any of your CPU power, but this one is like a soft off. It's just bypassed, but it is actually, it's like on deck. It's like ready to go and uh, so it, it is using some of your CPU power. S1, uh, I'm gonna turn it on by holding control and command. First it's gonna do one level of uh, reactivating and then I have to activate it one more time uh, for it to be actually be usable. What this is, is a stereo widener um, similar to the air, uh, the air widener. This is another, so air stereo with very similar. Uh, by the way, within the plugin, if you see the name of the plugin in a drop down menu, that's just another way where you can change what this plugin insert is. So, when we're given a stereo MP3 of the instrumental, oftentimes it's already mastered. It might just feel like it's really fighting the vocal for space. So, sometimes I will just widen it uh, a bit more, uh, and that will kind of make some room for the vocal to sit in the middle. So, that's just. Uh, that's just me. I have a stereo widener chilling on my beat and guide just in case I need it. <laughs> Sometimes, if there's a lot of noise in my room, I might put a gate, which uh, a gate uh, is just, it prevents noise from a certain like lower volume from entering. So if there's a really quiet sound, it will not let that sound pass. But if it's like your voice speaking, um, that's clearly 
uh, an, a loud enough sound, it won't, it won't even, uh, it won't bother that sound. Often um, between words, it might not let any in between sound come through. So uh, sometimes I put that on my <laughs> recording track. The way I have it routed, this stuff would be permanently printed. Like I can't turn it off. Uh, if I were to put like auto tune on this and then record through it, um, that auto tune would not be editable. Ugh, editable. <laughs> so I put the auto tune on the uh, vocal, not through this. So, um, cause I don't want it to be permanent. So this is an auxiliary. Um, in it's going in uh, I'm using uh, channel 2 right now my microphone is plugged into mic 2 the mic 2 input port on my interface so that's what this means on your computer it might say something different it might say mic 2 um, might say input 2 I have it on 2 you probably will be using 1 because you're normal I'm weird <laughs> and then I'm sending it out a mono check that I've named record this is the same as a bus 1112 the stereo version would be 1112 the mono version would be just 11 or just 12 um, it's the same thing I just happen to name that so this is basically like the equivalent of bus 100 101 um, so I'm technically just sending it out bus 101 uh, so do not be uh, confused by the labeling, um, that's something that, again, this is my template, this is how I have it set up. So it's going in from the microphone, it's going out a bus, and then I have another, uh, I have an audio channel, an audio track where that signal is being received. So um, I have it coming in bus record, and then I'm sending it out of output one and two. So this is a little bit of fancy footwork. Uh, I would maybe not recommend this type of setup to you. Um, I just made this decision when I was going through some noise issues. So um, you can totally just set up your recording track as one audio track. So this would be just like a regular audio track. Um, input can be input one, mic one. Output is gonna be out one and two. You can turn the fader down on your audio track. And I do this personally. Uh, a lot of people are like, I can't hear myself. And they want it to be up here. Um, I don't want to hear myself at all through my headphones. I specifically record with uh, one earphone off. And so I can hear the sound that's naturally like really coming out of my mouth into my ear. <laughs> so, so I actually go as far as even turning this down so I can't really hear myself through the headphones. And what I do from there, right? Okay, so when I record, that's where all my tracks are. This pisses some people off because when you record something on a certain track, it always names it, it always names the audio file, the clip, um, based on the track it's on. <laughs> so that does annoy people uh, I don't really care what the clips are named so I just care what the tracks are named um, so if this bothers you then don't do it this way just record right on to uh, your V lead track you can do that too I do it this way um, and I find it to be faster because then I just I record this and then I decide um, I'm gonna put that here and then maybe I'll maybe I'll record another lead vocal um, that might overlap like the entrance, right? Say I started singing like right here. I want to drag that actually to, oops. I want to drag that actually to this track so that they don't overlap. It would have been like an extra step for me to have to turn this off and then turn this one on. And then I'm constantly turning record uh, armed buttons on and off throughout my session. For me, um, just recording onto one record track and then dragging down, it makes it faster. That's my only reason for doing it. Next, moving on, I'm gonna show you first uh, all my audio tracks. Check it out. Uh, these are all my audio tracks. So I have two lead vocals going to one auxiliary and then I have the next two lead vocals going to a different auxiliary. I do find that um, if they are on top of each other, if I have like an ad lib and a lead vocal, um, 
like main melody singing at the same time. Um, I might put the lead vocal on this one and then like the ad lib on this one. So one of them is going to this auxiliary and one of them is going to the other auxiliary. This makes them more clearly audible independently. Um, they're not fighting for the same attention from this auxiliary. Um, some people say that that's BS and it's not supposed to be that way, but I can hear it with my own ears. So um, I do it that way. And then I just try to, um, for verse, verse lead one, verse lead two, or vocal lead one, vocal lead two, I guess that's what that means. The first verse here, then I'll do the pre-chorus here. But if I, and so I mainly am only using these two tracks, but then ad-libs or anything that's gonna have to overlap another vocal, I'll put on three and four. Uh, so you can see how I have it routed. The input doesn't matter because I'm not using it. I'm using the record track as my input. Um, so I'm sending out bus one and two, right? And then I'm going in the auxiliary via bus one and two, right? And then I'm sending it out output one and two, okay? I'm um, sending out um, my second set of lead vocals out three and four, which you can see uh, three and four are right here. Um, they're assigned already. And then you see what's on the channel. Uh, I've got I've got um, a de an EQ. I have a noise gate so I can eliminate some of that um, empty space uh, between words will and I love this is waves C1 gate and I love the perfect voiceover gate uh, preset then I have a compressor and then I have a limiter to make it louder and I have one more compressor <laughs> uh, vocal writer which I slam it so it, I really don't like dynamic vocals in pop music I just think everything should be the same volume and uh, once in a while uh, I don't know, depending on the day, <laughs> I might even add a second de -esser. Um Then my sends are here. Here are my sends. I have one send for reverb. I have an eighth note delay, quarter note delay, half note delay, and this I call the doubler delay. Um, it's just basically another half note delay, but then with more fun, uh, I have micro shift. Um, yeah, this is giving it a little phasey, cool uh, doubling effect. Um, here's how I have my auxiliaries set up. I have my leads right next to the leads because sometimes I make quick adjustments. Um, but then as far as my effects, I always just toss them at the end because I'm never adjusting my effects really. Um, they're set how I like them. And as I said before, uh, I like to put this little low cut underneath, um, yeah, and then uh, I use Valhalla uh, Room and Echo Boy for my delays. And you can see how I change each one. Um, okay, and then uh, this one's fun. I, I have a chorus uh, effects channel. Chorus, uh, it's just gonna thicken up background vocals. I only use it on background vocals, not the lead. So I have a uh, pan man happening. So just a little bit of like wiggling is happening with panning back and forth. I have this crazy kaleidoscope plugin on. Um, it's just giving it some more, some more character, some thickness. And then I have a stereo widener to make that even wider. Here are my uh, background vocal auxiliary channels. And there is a chorus fader here and I keep it kind of high. So um, you can see these are kind of like the levels I'm putting. Not a lot, I put a l kind of a lot of reverb on. <laughs> I think I find myself constantly turning the reverb down because <laughs> I have a lot. So check it out, that's how the lead is routed. Then we get into my background vocals. For the most part, I'm only stacking things in twos. For my template, I have all my background vocals turned down a bit. I have this really cool uh, elaborate panning system happening. Each set of two is panned the same way but uh, the same amount, the opposite. So I have my first ones at 100, 100, 80, 90, 70, 60, <laughs> 50, 90 again, 70 again. And then here are the auxiliaries. So I have the auxiliaries set up um, for my background vocals uh, with a little bit more fighting for space. Like uh, I wanted the, the leads to really be um, able to have their own shine. 
um, so I gave them their own auxiliary tracks. But the background vocals, I have um, four of them sending to one auxiliary. So you can see the A backs are going out, bus five and six. You see all of them going out by bus five and six. Here's bus five and six. You can see my inserts. They're all pretty much the same as the lead. Um, I might just, uh, maybe sometimes I cut a little bit more um, off the bottom on my background vocals. They always tell me to cut more off the low end. Yeah, so I should probably do more like that. But there's my EQ setting. <laughs> really, really, really simple, believe it or not. <laughs> then I have my V-backs uh, all the way through. My D-backs are going at seven and eight. Um, and then uh, I, I hope that I don't have to have more vocals than this in a song, but if I need more, I have deactivated tracks over here, just on deck, um, ready to go, labeled and grouped and everything. Um, similar setup. These are going out bus nine and 10, which is hiding down here. So yeah, is, I hope that's starting to feel um, comfortable as I'm repeating myself with like the sending out and then in, you know, this is the audio track, it's going out bus seven and eight. This is its respective auxiliary track that goes in bus seven and eight. All these sends are assigned. Um, I've, na I've named my sends, but all this reverb labeling just means this is bus 104 to dash 105, you know? Um, I labeled this, but in your system, you'll just see the numbers and you'll just choose and you can just pick a number, any number that makes you happy. But just decide if it's stereo or mono, if you're sending things out to stereo auxiliaries, uh, you're likely gonna wanna use a stereo send. Okay, so that's that. Um, that's how I have my audio tracks set up and how they're bussed to their respective um, auxiliaries uh, for the tone shaping, you know, the DSREQ compression. Effects, uh, I've got my reverb here, my delays, and my chorus. And then the last thing on my session is the master fader. These are the plugins I have on my master. So yeah, fun stuff. Uh, barely touching anything <laughs> on the EQ. And then one more final, make it loud. So that's how my template is set up. But then a couple more things, I love groups. Um, I have a group for auxiliary all. So that is all of these, including the background vocals. Um, if sometimes, um, since I have all my great compressors and limiters making my voice really loud, and I get an instrumental that's just like really quiet, I might click on the auxiliary all and just turn down all of my vocals. So by changing the volume of the auxiliary, uh, this is the overall volume of, of the audio tracks because I'm sending the audio tracks to here. So they're coming out here. So I can essentially control the volume um, right on their track or I can control it here as well right? Your auxiliaries, you're always going to want uh, pan left and right, full, fully left and right. Don't touch that. <laughs> Option click. I also have like, if I just want to control something on the, on the, on the back auxiliaries, like I turn these all the way down. Uh, these do not affect the lead auxiliaries. Like that's a, that's just a group I made. Um, oops, I turned it off. So if I do that, it's only going to fix the one, but if I had it on, uh, it would fix them both. Um, then I have the same of an auxiliary leads only. So these are connected, but then it doesn't affect my backgrounds. Um, I also have solos as part of the groups or mutes as part of the groups. I also have my send volumes as part of the group. So this is a big one for why I might use this group. Um, if I want to turn down the reverb um, of overall of my entire session, um, I would do auxiliary all. If I just wanted to turn down just the background, let's turn down the background auxiliary um, reverb because it was already way too loud. So uh, notice, remember this is right here at 21.8. I'm gonna turn it down to 27. And look at this, 
because I have my back aux group on, um, this one also turned down. So they're the same because of the group, but it did not change my lead. Um, whoa, that's funny. I actually changed it to almost the same amount. Um, if it was all, just to show you, and I opened any of the reverbs, uh, reverb sends, and turn them way the fuck up. Excuse my language. Um, they'd turn way the fuck up over here too. <laughs> so that's the power of groups. Then I just have uh, my leads in general. So, ta-da, plus on. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't, it would do just one of them. I don't have my background group on, so I can make this independent. Um, if I leave it down here, right, and I turn on my BGV group, and I think I'm gonna change all of them, like, look, this one's still, it's staying where it is, but it's still gonna move the same amount as the entire group. And they have a nice, like, vox all. Say I wanted to uh, option click this, all of my vocal audio tracks just went to zero. <laughs> and then I have an effects uh, group. I have an effects group. So that just affects all the effects. Affects the effects. Um, more customized groups instead of selecting all of the background vocals. Um, I just want to adjust a one and two. Or I just want to do this one. Right? So I have literally it set up for each set. <laughs> so it's quite quite intricate, um, very time consuming, set all that up. So see where your priorities are at and then just make it a point to keep editing your template down the line. So hey, honestly, that is, that is the gist of it. I did customize like the view, like maybe this was out and like before I saved as template, I like tucked it back in, right? Um, if you don't feel like you're going to be using groups, maybe just tuck it in and save your template like this. You can automatically have the click track muted. I do that. I have the click track muted um, before I sign in. <laughs> so, because um, I don't want to hear 120 beats clicking when I haven't even figured out the tempo of this instrumental. It won't go along with it. So, um, yeah. I feel like that is really my grand tour and I'm very excited for you to make your own templates and hopefully this makes your life super duper easier. So uh, yeah, this week's homework, save your first template. Let's do it. <laughs>